Welcome to Module 1, AI Basics and How the Technology Might Help Newsrooms. My name is Amy Reinhardt, and I'm the Senior Product Manager, AI Strategy at the Associated Press. In this video, we'll go over what, the, what is AI and why there's a frenzy about it right now. You'll hear a variety of definitions for artificial intelligence, but at its plainest, AI is a subfield of computer science. The word intelligence indicates that the computer somehow has free will or can reason. It can't. A computer program has been trained with information that humans have provided over and over again from vast swaths of the internet to, re to render answers and complete tasks. There's a lot of anthropomorphizing of this technology. Even the systems themselves have so-called neural networks. But the systems are not human. They are machines that humans have programmed. AI technology powers certain kinds of automation, but there are ways to automate things without AI. Let's talk about that range of automation. There's simple process automation, something like an automated trigger that you set up to publish an article to your website and social media simultaneously. There's low risk AI, like the Associated Press uh, used with automated earnings reports in 2014. AP gets structured data, the content in a column A is reliably the same, and has created a template so that if a stock price goes up, the template will use the word up. By using natural language generation, AP went from writing 300 earnings reports by humans to producing 3,000 reports. Then there's high-risk AI, like writing a prompt and creating a new story or a summary of the story or headlines. We group these into three categories because these are things to consider when thinking about implementing tools into your newsroom. Do you need a simple trigger in place, as in like email sorting, or do you have a reliable source of data and a lot of information coming in that could render a news brief through natural language generation? The last category, high-risk AI, points to generative AI. Can you afford to take the risk in your newsroom? Do you have human oversight, or is it going straight to publish? For AP's Local News AI Initiative, we developed five projects that involved AI. After testing out generative AI and getting uneven results for our automated weather reports in Spanish and automated police incident reports, we decided that the information was too important to leave to chance and used low-risk AI or templatized natural language generation to produce these projects. There's a lot of hype around generative AI now. When people mention AI, they are often referring to ChatGPT. The company that produced ChatGPT, OpenAI, released the tool in late November of 2022. And by December, enough people had tested it out, myself included, and realized the technology was delivering responses fast and in a conversational manner. Suddenly, those who work in fields where writing is critical started to feel a shift and asked, are our jobs safe? There are other chatbots, Google's Bard and Anthro Anthropic's Claude, and sometimes those render better results. But ChatGPT has the advantage to being first and by now highly adopted with more than 1 million, 100 million users. Getting back to the question, are our jobs safe? The answer for now is unclear. The only people making a lot of money off of this technology so far are the computer chip manufacturers and servers. Jobs are sure to change. At the moment in the development and uh, fast deployment of one advance after another in AI, it's important to learn these systems and their capabilities. See how they might fit into our workflows and determine our standards before the technology determines it for us. The first reading by doctoral candidate at the Oxford in Internet Institute, Felix Simon, is about how AI could give big tech more control over the news. Give it a read and we'll discuss it in the forums this week.